Yeah. Uh, so I'm James McBain from Hell Ripper. Um, based in Scotland, it's a black speed or black thrash solo project of mine. Um, we have a new album, Warlocks Grim and Withered Hags, coming out on the 17th of February through Peaceville Records. It's eight tracks um, of, like I say, black speed metal with the central theme of Scotland with all the songs being inspired by Scotland in some way. Very cool, mate. Thanks for joining us tonight, James. And thank you for having me, man. Appreciate oh, it. My pleasure. So as you mentioned, Hell Ripper will release your third album, Warlocks, Grim and Withered Hags, on February the 17th. So how are you feeling about it, bro? Yeah, I'm feeling very, very positive about it. I'm very happy with how the the whole process went and how everything turned out. Um, I explored a little bit of a different, uh, uh, some different elements to include in the sound this time, which I think improved the songs. And yeah, I'm looking forward to finally getting it out there. It's been about three years in the making or something now, just uh, the writing process. So yeah, man. Well, look, before we actually get into the album, mate, I've, I've got to ask you about the title, Warlocks Grim and Withered Hags. Like, it's absolutely fantastic, but I've got no idea what it means. <laughs> yeah, so um, the title track, uh, Warlocks Grim and Withered Hags, um, is primarily based on a Robert Burns poem or the works of uh, Robert Burns, and in particular, uh, uh, the poem Addressed to the Devil. Um, and yeah, the, the title comes from a line in that um, poem and I thought yeah it sounded suitable for a Hellripper album title I think I like the rhythm of it I like the, the way it sounds and it, yeah, it sounds kind of suitably evil ominous and uh, yeah, it kind of gets you thinking I guess um, you can use your imagination to kind of you know what, what does it mean <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> so tell us a bit more about the album from a musical point of view mate and what you're going for with it yeah, so this time around, I mean, yeah, it's inspired by, of course, all the bands I'm usually inspired by, you know, your uh, Metallica, Annihilator, Bathory, Venom, Megadeth, Sabbath, um, uh, Dark Throne, all, any kind of black speed metal, black thrash, metal punk, all that kind of stuff. But this time around, I wanted to kind of explore some different uh, elements, like I mentioned previously, and... Yeah, so I was listening to a lot of, you know, um, other metal music, you know, just not in that style, you know, stuff such as maybe Agaloc, Opeth, Typo Negative, Edge of Sanity, stuff like that. And I was listening to a lot of, like, 90s music as well, um, not even necessarily metal, so bands, you know, um, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, even Oasis, Manic Street Preachers stuff like that, the Beatles, the Doors, uh, just you name it, anything. And um, I'm a big fan of all that music anyway, so I thought it would be a fun challenge and, yeah, see how it would turn out if I included this this influence in the Hellripper sound. And like I say, it was a fun challenge to do that without, you know, diluting the overall sound. I wanted it to still be black speed, black thrash at the core. Um, I didn't want it to lose that. But I wanted to also include these different influences, whether it be from a songwriting perspective or a production um, perspective or something like that. So, yeah, it's a lot more varied, I think, but I think the results are uh, better for it. And you've released the single The Knuckle of E. So would you say that's a good sonic representation of the album as a whole? I would, yeah. There, are, Like I say, there's a, um, there's a, it's quite a div diverse album for Hellripper standards. But yeah, the Knuckle of E, I think, kind of is this song that kind of sums the overall vibe up. You know, it's uh, a bit more complex in song structure. It's got um, some different tempos, some different, um, different what, what would you say, vibes, you know, like different vibes on each part of the track. Um, it's fast for the most part. Um, yeah, and it's the album opener, um, which I used it as the album opener just because it's very immediate. Um, after like a one second drum intro, it just goes full speed into into the track. So, yeah, overall, I'd say it's a good um, representation. Yeah, that sort of steals my next question off me, mate. But like you say, that song does open the album and it kicks straight in off the back of a of a, a massive drum blast before a wall of guitars takes over. So, was that sort of did you choose that as the opener as a as a statement of intent, I guess, because it just comes in and grabs you straight up. 
yeah as a statement of intent yeah um i wanted the album to you know just open up just straight away just get into it like i like the i like the kind of idea of you know putting the needle on the record that just going straight away and uh also i wanted to kind of contrast with the previous album um the affair of the poisons which kind of opened up in a with a slower heavier kind of pounding kind of beat so yeah both yeah both of those reasons <laughs> Yeah, and the press release calls the album your most personal and diverse work to date. So we've spoken about the diverse side of it, but w would you agree that, that it is your most personal work to date? Yeah, um, I would say both personal in terms of uh, the lyrical um, content being like, based on Scotland in some way for each track, but um, I would say more personal in the sense of, as I discussed before, like um, the musical influence is more uh, diverse so it kind of explores all of my musical influences from different different styles and stuff I didn't feel as limited this time you know like it kind of yeah it represents my whole musical personality in a in a sense and as you say mate like lyrically the album's inspired by the landscapes and legends of the Scottish Highlands and explores the darker side of Scottish history and folklore so can you elaborate on that a bit more like the People over this side of the world find it hard to believe that there's anything dark about Scotland at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. So, yeah, that was the uh, the original thing is I moved to the Highlands about um, four years ago or something near the end of the writing process for the last album. And I'm not usually inspired or influenced by my environment. But, um, yeah, being in the Highlands, it kind of being surrounded by these landscapes and stuff like that it was kind of hard not to be inspired by that and yeah it made me kind of want to look into some like scottish folklore and scottish history and stuff you know um kind of the darker side like you mentioned there you know i didn't want to speak about like i wasn't looking to speak about like you know like william wallace and all that kind of stuff i wanted it to be stuff that would suit Hellripper's aesthetic, you know, like the devil in Scotland and folklore and, you know, sea serpents and all this kind of evil stuff. And um, I thought maybe I would, or originally I maybe would get one or two songs out of it for the new album, but after reading more into um, the Scottish folklore and, and all this stuff, um, I realised there was so much to write about um, and eventually thought, yeah, let's just make the whole album centered around the theme of uh scotland like um i'd never done a th theme like an album with a theme or concept before and i thought this would be interesting it's also something a bit different um to what the usual black speed black thrash lyrical themes are um and yeah there's like i say i was i knew um kind of a bit about all these folklore and all that stuff beforehand and most of the stuff i'd kind of knew the I'd heard of it and stuff like that, but I wasn't, uh, I didn't know the, the details of it, of, of a few things. And yeah, looking into that, so you've got stuff like um, the Knuckle of E, like you mentioned, it's a giant, grotesque, skinless, horse-like demon that has a the torso of a rider attached to its back and it, uh, it's it got a poisonous breath that can wilt crops and it causes plague and things. So it's like perfect for the Hell Ripper, um kind of aesthetic and uh similarly um yeah the warlock's grim and withered hags the title track um primarily based on uh the, the poem like i said addressed to the devil by robert burns and that poem it's kind of a, a humorous poem kind of downplaying the devil and and things like that but i wanted to use the poem and reference the poem but twist the the point of view so it becomes kind of a devil worship kind of song, but using the you know the the lines from the poem and stuff like that. So I thought that was uh, cool to do. But um, yeah, there's plenty of uh, yeah, just plenty of like things you can see in all these Scottish folklore and traditions and rituals. Um, you've got um, one of the tracks, "Goat Vomit Nightmares," based on a a Scottish ritual where. Um, there was a couple of methods of doing it, but you had a a lot of it involved kind of animal sacrifice and things to um, it was as a ritual of divination to kind of get answers to questions or get your uh, wishes fulfilled. And 
methods of doing it would be to like roast cats oh, wow. on fire yeah <laughs> until like uh until like a legion of black cats would appear and uh, and uh tell you or um the song is more based on the kind of method of uh the person would r uh, wrap themselves in the hide um of a freshly killed animal and then they would go beside a waterfall or something a desolate place and kind of like sensory deprivation um and they would uh you know kind of hallucinate the the answer to the the questions wow. um and stuff like that so yeah there's a lot of stuff um to go in i don't want to i don't want to like uh go like waste a lot of time you know like explaining all That's everything but yeah, there's so much uh yeah there's so much to explore and a lot of it's interesting and and yeah it was just yeah it was cool like all these things that i could use uh, to fit in with the hell the hell ripper aesthetic you know um and it, yeah like i say it was it was a fun thing to interesting topics to to look at and yeah, yeah it's well, a bit different to usual yeah it sounds like you could just keep making albums forever based on on the old scottish folklore yeah there's a lot to write yeah i've got a few i've got a few uh things like left over that i never used for this album like just because they uh didn't fit the the tracks but yeah there'll definitely be more uh stuff uh based on scotland in some way coming whether in an ep or the next album or whatever i've not too sure yet but yeah there's so much to explore yeah. um yeah if anyone's interested in all that kind of stuff yeah it's a good thing to explore i would say like it's yeah. interesting I'm, I'm going to start exploring after this chat, mate. I had no idea. Like, I've been to Scotland before, and we, we did the, like, the, the touristy Mary Queen of Scots, you know, like the underground, all that sort of tours, but you don't hear about this side of things, but that's that's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, most people are kind of familiar, yeah, like I say, like that kind of stuff, and the William Wallace and all these, the clan battles and stuff like that. But, yeah, there's so much folklore and uh, witchcraft and stuff like that that, yeah. Yeah, very cool. And I think it's important to note here too, mate, that Hell Ripper is essentially a one-man project led by yourself. So I, I honestly mm. find that amazing after listening to the album. So you do all the guitars, the vocals, drums, you do everything. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it was just uh, basically it was a way at the start. Originally, I didn't really know many people. Um, I wasn't really a part of my local scene. I was too young to go to most shows because I couldn't get into pubs and things. Um, so... I, after spending years like jamming with friends and stuff we could never find drummers we could never find uh vocalists and stuff so it was just uh yeah i decided yeah if i keep waiting for the right people and from to come along i'm never gonna i'm never gonna do this so i just thought yeah a lot of my favorite bands are toxic holocaust midnight um dark throne bathory and all these people were like diy one or two people projects and i thought okay it's possible to do that um let's see what i can do and yeah i wanted to learn how to record and mix and stuff myself and it was a good chance to kind of learn how to do that while writing the music that i wanted to write in a yeah, I originally started a couple of years earlier, but I wasn't happy with the results. Yeah. Um, so I deleted everything and then came back to it a couple of years later and, yeah, released the first EP to um, what I thought would be like 10 people in my local scene in the Aberdeen scene at the time when I was part of the scene. Um, and uh, maybe 10 people there would kind of like it, maybe be interested. But yeah, and it's kind of grown and grown into what it is now and yeah i'm still work alone because i just prefer this method yeah. um it's just i can i can do things at my own pace when i want how i want um i don't need to you know uh adhere to other people's schedules and things like that and go to rehearsals every week or whatever it's kind of just doing things at my house as like my hobby is writing music and stuff so i can it's just like me doing uh my hobby really and yeah it's it's a really f fun process for me it's basically all i do really <laughs> <laughs> and we've mentioned diversity a few times and i can vouch for the fact that the album is diverse as hell like it's got so many different influences in there but like usually in a band situation you've got four or five people so it's easy to get the diversity because you've got yeah. all these different inputs coming in but do you find like as a solo artist like it's a bit more difficult for you to do that because you haven't got all these other influences come in it's pretty much just your own 
Yeah, I do think that in a way, because yeah, like you say, like if you've got five people or whatever bringing in all their own ideas, like from different, uh, like different perspectives, different influences, interests, and all that, yeah, it can create, um, you know, like a unique sound. Everyone getting getting their like points across and things. But yeah, I do think it's possible to do that as a solo artist, like which I'm trying to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is. Um, yeah, it's more difficult, I would say, just because there's some stuff um, that I, you know, I have an idea of a sound I want. And sometimes it's very valuable to, you know, have someone come in with a completely different, like, different idea. Like, I'll, I, yeah, you know what I mean? It's uh, try to explain myself there. But yeah, it's difficult to, if, you, if you've got like a writer's block or whatever, you know, I don't know where to go with this part of the song. If you've got other people involved, they can just come in with a, a, a for example, like a jazz part or something, and something like you would never, part. yeah, and you would never think of, and you would go, yeah, excellent. Whereas, yeah, it's more difficult to do that on your own. But yeah, like you, like I say, it was a fun challenge for me trying to kind of explore all these different influences of mine, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully this is just the start, and I'll keep doing it and keep improving in the future, and. uh I mean, yeah, that's basically the main goal. Just keep making good songs, hopefully improve, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And you're going to be um doing a bit of a bit of a road trip promoting the album. You got some festivals lined up and some of your own shows, mate. So tell us about them. Yeah, so we're doing. We've got a sort of album release show, which is uh, the week before the album release um, in Glasgow. Um, then we're heading out for a few dates in the UK with Warbringer, which will be really fun. One of my favorite bands of all time. And then, yeah, we've got a few like one-off kind of festivals and stuff throughout the UK and Europe throughout the year. And uh, yeah, we're going to be away for most of summer kind of in Europe doing uh, shows and festivals. Uh, a lot of it's not announced yet and stuff like that. So there's not much to really talk about about it yet but um yeah we'll be away for about uh four to six weeks or something in summer doing various things and then that'll probably just continue into uh 2024 you know doing some european tours and all that and yeah i, I hope to get over to australia at some point and i'd love to get over to the us and stuff but yeah there's only a certain amount of time and yeah. uh money yeah yeah, yeah money and money and time uh it means we've kind of got to choose um choose our like kind of focus stuff, yeah. yeah so for now yeah we're just uh kind of doing europe in the uk i mean if something comes up then yeah i'd love to but yeah i mean this will be the first album we've actually promoted with like live shows right. the first album the first album i think we played two shows in that year so it didn't really get promoted the al the, the band wasn't like a fully like working live band we would only play shows occasionally and then yeah the last album was released right in the middle of the pandemic so we had uh european and uk tours cancelled and festival appearances cancelled and stuff so we didn't play a show for like a year after the album was released so this will be a, a fine change uh to, to actually do things right i guess yeah and what do you do for the live shows mate like do you bring like session musicians in to play on them or do you use backing tracks or yeah so it's like session musicians but they're it's like uh this it's been the same guys um in the band for about four years now um and the, we're all kind of we're all friends so it's really easy to work with them and they're all good musicians and like i say we've been doing it for four years like as the live band so yeah it's really fun like meeting up with them and <clears throat> uh playing the shows like it's a different it's a totally different uh kind of mindset for me like i kind of separate the live thing and the the studio thing so it's kind of you yeah, the life the live thing is is more of a kind of you know a band like everyone kind of gets can include their own ideas and stuff in the songs as long as it doesn't like you know like, extremely oh, change oh, the songs yeah. and stuff yeah so it's kind of like a it's fun to have like the band context there and then when it's time for me to write and record it's like a solo thing and yeah i'm kind of like a solo focus so yeah it's kind of cool having the two different um sides to things uh, i mean what's the band just two guitars bass and drums uh yeah two guitars uh so we've got me on vocals and guitar uh, my friend joseph 
on uh, other guitar who does a few guitar solos on this new album as well um really good guitar player different kind of influences for me again uh, like we we're saying uh, you mentioned there like with people bringing in their different um influences um when i get someone in to do a guest solo or something that's always a cool way to kind of keep things a, a bit fresh something offer something a bit different from what i'm doing in the lead guitar department for example i'm always kind of you know megadeth metallica annihilator acdc kind of influence with solos um and joseph uh, he's influenced by stuff like uh queen and stuff like that queen and van halen and stuff so yeah it was cool to have him do that on the on the album kind of have some different things going on now we've got clarky on bass who i've played in with bands for about 10 years now since i've been part of the since i was part of the aberdeen scene uh aberdeen music scene then we've got Max, who is actually based about 15 hours away from me or something. Uh, he's like at the very bottom of the UK and I'm at the top of the UK almost. So, yeah, um, he's a great drummer and he's got his own band that are doing amazing as well. Vacuous, cool death metal stuff. Um, and yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> very good. All right, James. Well, thanks very much for your time. Tonight, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Warlock's Grim and Withered Hags is out February the 17th. And like I said at the start, mate, absolute belter of an album. I don't care if it's a solo project or if there's 20 of you in there. It's an absolute belter <laughs> of an album, bro. So well done. Thank you very much, man. Really appreciate it. And thank you for, for your time as well. My pleasure. Have yourself a good day, man. Good luck packing all those shirts away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.